Oh boy, are we in for a treat. Oh boy, Tony. No, thank you. Get ready, get ready for your big interview, Tony. This is your chance. Oh yeah, we'll be here. We'll be, we'll be together. We're gonna be together for like an hour. Oh. Oh, does it, it, it take that long to get there? No, about 35 minutes. You get room for me in here? I'm just cleaning out. All right. Yeah, Beth, take your time. Boston Trucker here. Welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy it. Alright, I'm here with Tony Cardillo. We're on our way to TRP to pick up my new truck. We're going to bring it back to get lettered. Then we're going to bring it back probably in the weekend. Tony, let's start from the beginning. Go ahead. You were born a poor black child to sharecroppers in Mississippi. <laughs> well, that's a different story. We'll go, we'll go even further back. Yes. We'll even go... Out. On the side of the trucks, a few people have asked me, uh, Anthony Red Cardillo. Yeah, who's Red Cardillo? Okay, that's my father. That's my father. Um, Why'd they call him Red? Red hair. Okay. Flaming red hair. Italian, uh, You though. don't know, yeah. He looked Irish as Irish could be. When the two of us together, we could get away without father and son stuff. We okay. Could, we could, uh, nobody knew it. Uh, my son Anthony had until until his hair left. I figured he Anthony had, got the red hair from oh, your yeah, wife's he had, side. Yeah, the, my yeah my my uh, my wife's mother had auburn hair. Okay, because your wife's Irish, correct? My wife's so Irish. I always, that's what I always assumed. So, so your dad. All, all Italians marry Irish girls. I don't know why, but it just happens. <laughs> you think about it. And all my sons married Irish girls. Did they really? Yeah. Clancy, Followed in your footsteps. Clary. Um, Obviously, hey. he obviously, you knew something. Yeah. So, kind tell me about your dad. Time. Okay. Um, my father, my father was the youngest. He had three sisters. So, he grows up in Belmont, uh, goes as far as the eighth grade, mm -hmm. and uh, leaves school. Leaves school, graduates the eighth grade, leaves school. It's... I don't know what year it is, but it's after the Depression. Mm -hmm. uh, my my grandfather was a mason, mason contractor. But he was a little guy, uh, do steps, walks, yeah. walkways. Uh, if, if a foundation, if, if they did a foundation out of block, at back in the day, they, if they didn't do poured concrete, they did block. Okay. So my father worked with them, left, left, the, uh, left school in eighth grade. Uh, works with him and World War II hits. World War II, yeah. My father's too young. He's only 16 years old. 16 plus. Uh, my grandfather shuts his masonry business down. My grandfather goes to work as a um, um, maintenance contractor in the maintenance department okay. for um, Raytheon. All Raytheon right. and... Um, Never, never remember the name of the place. It was a, it was a factory next door. Raytheon was a contractor for the government, right? Made weapons. A contractor for weapons. My okay. grandfather. That's all he did. He fixed, uh, pointed chimneys, uh, blah right. blah blah. He did stuff like that. Uh, so my father. There you go. I can't say want to see my balance on my face. We're okay. Get off the next exit, by the way, after the service pause. Gotcha. Uh, okay. My grandfather goes to work Raytheon. My father goes to um, South Boston Naval Shipyard. Yeah. Uh, they're looking for help, obviously. Uh, goes there, they make him a welder. Said to my father, "Did you know how to weld?" Yeah. He says, "No. They don't. They don't want you to know how to weld. They want to teach you how to weld." So you don't have any bad habits. Correct. So he goes there and he starts off a tacker. What that means is they set a, 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 a plate in place. You give it a weld here and it'll mm -hmm. attack. So he does that. Ends up working there a couple of years, I think. But he end they end up he ends up in, in the division. They make landing craft. You know, Tom Hanks. Uh, 
everybody, everybody gets on the boat to the beach. Yeah. The big ramp yeah, comes yeah, down yeah. landing craft. Okay. So that's where he. That's what they did. They built landing craft in, okay. in this particular spot in Boston. Next, so the next exit. He's he's uh he's like 17 and a half. Yeah. And if you get your parents to sign, you got to be 18 to join the service. He gets his parents to sign. If you can get your parents to sign right. at 17 and a half, you can go into the service. So he gets he gets his mother and his father to sign. Um, um, and so your dad's very patriotic. Is that why? Uh, to, what was the reason he wanted? Yeah, to Yeah, my father says, "I says, Dad, how come you were you were? They needed people like that on the home front. Well, there's fixing." He says, "No." He says, "Everybody in the neighborhood was in the service, and I wanted to." I wanted to be where the action is. Really? I said, okay. Good for him. Okay, you're going to be where the action is. So my grandfather, you're going to get out of this. So my grandfather, my grandmother makes a deal with them. She gives him, uh, she gives him this medal. Oh. Um, um, my, my, um, my sisters, after my father passed away, my mother passed away, when they were cleaning the house up, they found this. And the deal was, my grandma, my grandmother signed the, Signed the papers uh, with the stipulation that he had to wear this medal the whole time. Okay. And when my sisters found it, they gave it to me. It's got it's got it's got Saint. It's got the the the, the uh, three for it. Saint Christopher, yep. Virgin Mary, and Jesus. Yep. So he was very well protected being in the service. That's, wow. So he goes in. He goes in. Um, he's going to go in the navy. And he's waiting in line in um, um, South Boston at the, uh, the, the big on Commonwealth Commonwealth Pier. Yep. And so he's waiting in line, and uh, some guys he knows said to him, "Red, what the hell are you doing going to the Navy?" He says, "I'm going to the Navy." He says, "You can't swim, Red." <laughs> and he says, "Yeah." He says, "But you know, they'll probably teach me." No, 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 no. <laughs> Come over here. Come over here. Listen, you can, my father always said this, you can walk further than you can swim. Come over here. So he ends up going in the Army. Uh-huh. And uh, after training, they put him on the big guns. That's what he uh-huh. called it. I don't know what the big guns meant. I never, I, I, them, whatever it is, uh, somebody will know the name of these yeah. things. But they, he, uh, he, that's what they, ha- that's what they do gets on the big guns and it just so happened that because my father my grandfather was a mason contractor yeah my father my grandfather had a couple little dump trucks so my father knew how to drive a truck Mm -hmm. and he knew how to back up yeah and so uh, they let him pull the big guns he was a member of the the team or whatever it was so um, he liked it and however it happened uh, from the big guns, he ended up doing more and more, and he ended up in the motor pool. Okay. And um, he didn't. He didn't. We learned a lot of these stories later on in life. Okay. He never really talked about what he did in the service. He was pretty. He pretty quiet about it. So. Well, let's jump ahead. You told me he's a World War II. We're going to stay in the left lane here and get on 9 West. That way. You said he went to Germany. Okay. He's in World War II. He's in Germany. We're watching Band of Brothers one night. Okay. And they're showing uh, Battle of the Bulge. Yep. And my father says, they're showing a guy in a foxhole. My father says, freaking cold. 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 Yeah. So what do you mean, Dad? It was cold. You at the Battle of the Bulge, Jack? Yeah. So oh. what the hell are you doing at the Battle of the Bulge? He says, well, he says, we were, we were transporting, uh, we bring troops in, we bring supplies in. He says, so we come there, uh, he says, and uh, they're going to offload the, they're going to offload the, the truck, and uh, the guy says, uh, stay warm, it's going to be a while. He says, so he got me in a foxhole, yep. he says, and it's freezing. And the guy in the foxhole sneezing, and he says, "I see trucks passing. Yep. Other, other, um, 
other deuce and halves passing where they had my truck parked. I, he'd been there for many hours. Yeah. And he says, uh, I says to the captain, hey, how come they're not unloading my truck? Yeah. He says, well, he's told He says, that's a, that they're, they're, I can't, they're carrying ammunition. We're going to stay on that guys. He says, it's a volunteer thing. Okay. He says, yeah, how do I do it? He says, what do you mean? He says, how do I do it? I said, he says, it's freezing here. Yeah. Uh, he says, well, yeah, you gotta, it's a, strictly a volunteer run. And he, he volunteered to carry ammunition. Oh, Which way, Mike? Uh, straight. We're going to go straight. Up over? I don't know. No, straight. Okay, got it. To the right, but the lane will end up here. Yeah. Uh, so we ended up, he ended up doing that. Uh -huh. um, uh, his buddy says, what are you doing that for? He says, my father had a lot of faith in, in the uh, in the army. He says, yep. "Yeah, he says they've got all different ways they send you, so the Germans won't won't find you." <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> okay, Dad, good good idea. So we did that, but he did that for a very. He says, "You know, the army being the army, he says they got you on that duty." He said, "And then when you pull in, when you when you pull in to uh, uh, to the camp out out in the." Uh, in the back, back lines, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. He says, next thing you know, they, they load you with something else, they send you someplace else. He says, so we did that, we did that for a while. Um, and uh, while I was moving on, uh, and the next thing that happened, to, he told us about that story, and then the next thing that happened was, um, again, whatever, whatever, it was Sunday dinner, one, we were watching, lane. We were lane. watching TV, yep. and they were showing uh, Auschwitz. Yeah. Yeah. The Holocaust. Holocaust, all right. Concentration camp. Yeah. Right. He says, uh, yeah, he says, I still got the smell on my nose. I looked at him. The what? What the hell are you talking about, Dad? He says, uh, he says they woke us up 3 o'clock in the morning. And my father was, <laughs> every story my father told always involved chow. Okay. He was very good with, yeah, well, we went down there and we had chow. And the guy told me to go wait over there and uh -huh. grab some chow. He says, they woke us up at 3 o'clock in the morning, grab some chow. They load us with GIs. Okay. He says, and we went right in the front gate. Come on. Of Listen, he went back to Germany with my mother years later. Yeah. And my mother says, he showed me. This is where we went in. We went in the front gate, right over here. Mm -hmm. Loaded, he had, he had, he had, he had uh, GIs, loaded GIs. They went in, they liberated the camp. Wow. Isn't that weird? He That's went, he, they went in there. He, I said, what'd you do, Dad? He said, we, we took GIs in. And then he says, we put, they, they loaded you with DPs. What's that? Displaced persons. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. What it came up with a name. Yeah. So they load us with DPs. He says, we brought them back to camp. He says, and then uh, they loaded us with, they load us with German, with German show, with German uh, soldiers. Oh, the prisoners. He says, prisoners. He yeah. says, well, he says, and we took them to, um, like a they, like they mustered out. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they they got rid of the, uh, they got rid of the, um, uh, the unit. He says so. Um, he says that, he says that was the spookiest part. He says because you had a whole load of, of German soldiers. Yeah. He says there was me and a driver. He says they just want to kill you. Well, he says yeah. my father says you know you'd stop uh, for a piss call. Yeah. Uh, and he says uh, he would stay on one side and I'd stay on the other and we'd try to get him in a crossfire. <laughs> he says but yeah. um, I don't know these guys were so happy to be to be to be done with it. He said, we never uh, had any trouble. He says, except for one time. He says, we were loading them on, and this officer is uh, yelling. Bye, 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 bye. He's got his hands in the air. Yep. And he says, the captain says to me, Cadillo, what is he saying? He says, I looked at the captain. I don't speak German. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell he's saying. And he says, okay, pat him down. And my father, my father, he's like, pat him down. And he had a freaking Luger oh, under his armpit. Wow. He says he must have come out of the woods or something. But mm -hmm. this guy, never, nobody patted him down. For yep. some unknown reason, he come walking up and he didn't want to get caught with it. Mm -hmm. He says it was, he was an officer. He says, and he had a, um, a shoulder harness on, 
for the German Luger. He says, and we, and we, uh, he says, we took the gun off him and we put him in the truck. Right. I says, so what did you do? Okay. Yeah. Okay, finish. Okay. Yeah, he says, what did you do? He said, well, like all good American soldiers, I was a souvenir hunter. <laughs> and he took it, he took it home. And he kept it. He took, he kept it and he, he sent it home to my um, grandmother. Yeah. And uh, my grandmother intercepted the package and she never gave him the gun. Ah. She took the gun and he, he sent home an Italian rifle yep. and uh, a Luga. And she never, she never, she never gave him the package. She hid it. Mm. And probably about 50 years later, my aunt calls me up. Yeah. And my aunt, uh, my, my aunt took care of my of my grandparents. Yep. My aunt calls me up. She says, Anthony. She says, yeah, Ronnie. Right. That's a cop. What should I do with your father's gun? I says, what gun? Yeah. You know, the gun he took back from the, uh, uh, from the service. Yeah. For, when he, the, gun, the gun he took back from the army. I says, don't move. <laughs> I'm on my way. So I go over there, she hands me the gun, the, ha the uh, shoulder uh, the shoulder harness, yep. and um, I said, where did you have it? Well, your grandmother put it in the closet up on the top oh shelf. So that whole time, time, it was on the clo it was in the closet. And I looked in the closet, and the Italian rifle was next to it. Standing next up. To standing up in the, standing up right. in the closet. <laughs> uh, my father comes home, World War II. Yep. Uh, World War II gets out, um, World War II ends, he ends up being a bodyguard, and, well a driver really, for a colonel, um, and um, they do their, um, so your dad can handle himself. Uh, well, he, um, after the war, now they gotta, now they gotta, um, educate all these all these mayors and governors, no, probably not governors, but they had to get all these small town people and explain to them what's going to happen next. So, and, and they got to teach them, and they got to teach them, they're trying to teach them English, they're trying to teach them what the hell's going on. So he does that for a year Hold or on, so. Hold on, I got to stop you. In Germany or in the United States? He's in, he's in Germany. Okay. He's in, he's in Germany, and, and at one point they were in Switzerland. Okay. And so, um, one day, well, he's there. He's got a he's got a nice kid. He gets homesick. He's getting homesick. Yeah, sure. And uh, that's what happened. He says, "I was I was all done. I could go home. I was staying with this colonel." He mm -hmm. says, "Cause uh, it was a good deal." And he says, "It was a nice job." He says, "But I just I just couldn't do it anymore. I wanted to come home." So he comes home. My grandfather's a mason, like I said. Yeah. But now my my father's been in the motor pool, and. He's got too much diesel fuel in his blood. Sure. All right. No, and, no idea what that's like. And he, <laughs> so he comes home and he wants to buy a bulldozer. Okay. So he looks around and he buys this tiny little dozer. It's on the idea of a clock airborne. A clock airborne was a was a small tiny dozer. It's probably about five feet five feet long, three feet wide. Yep. They used to parachute these little dozers out of the plains uh, down on the South Pacific or whatever, and that's how they they would they would clear some land for a landing strip. But anyway, so he buys his tiny little dozer. Uh, he does that, great. Um, now he's going to start digging holes and grading yards off yep. and whatever. Uh, realizes very shortly that it's too small buys a little bigger one he's got a I've got a bunch of pictures I'll show you so this is 1948 this is 48, yeah right? yeah 48 he, I think he got he comes home meets, meets my mother yeah uh, next thing you know next thing next thing you know like all girls he talked she talks him into getting married yeah and so uh, <laughs> uh, buys a small machine buys another and gets rid of, oh it's too small gets rid of gets rid mm -hmm. of it buys another one uh, wrong kind buys another one, and that's what happened. Little by little, he kept he kept um, he kept moving up. Uh, he bought he bought a his the uh, really the first 
things that he bought was he bought HD5 shovel doses. Mm -hmm. He bought them brand new. And, and at the time, they were working, they were doing a lot of work in Boston. He was a rental contractor. Uh, they didn't have the amount, um, he worked for, one of his main customers was Jeremiah Sullivan. And they didn't have enough equipment so Sullivan would rent it well okay. so that that's what he did as a matter of fact he uh, he he worked they worked in the they worked in the Prudential he was in he had a machine down on the hole on Prudential wow. he had a machine down on the hole with John Hancock building I remember going there so people who don't know that aren't from this area the Prudential and the Hancock are the two biggest skyscrapers in Boston right and he's at the bottom of them right building he's them. In, 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 yep. so it, he had, he had uh, there was like probably a young, a run, a one yard capacity yep. machine, wow. something like that. So from there, so from there, that plus he's doing, he's doing a lot of residential. Uh, now he knows he, he wants an excavator, yep. uh, so he buys a, a 15B Bucyrus Erie cable backhoe. Uh, and uh, you still have that? Is that I, the one you have? We still got it. It's 1955. Uh, with a little luck, you and I are going to move that to the. It's, I got it stored in Waltham. We're gonna move okay. it to the. Okay. People keep asking little, me, where is the Bucera? Yeah, we're gonna move it to. We're gonna move it to the little tip. Okay. That'll be awesome. Yeah, it's gonna gonna set be it up. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna set it up. Uh, it's it's uh, need, needs a few brake bands, okay. but we've had it running. Uh, a few years ago, we had it running, and we're gonna we're gonna get it running again. That's that's a simple fix. Yeah. The, uh, so your dad's at the Prudential. We've got the, yeah that plus he's doing a lot of. Plus, he's doing a lot of uh, residential and stuff like that. Let me like interrupt that. you for a second. We're going to get on Route 20 West in about a mile. Yeah. It's a right-hand exit. Um, you can stay in the middle lane because I believe this right lane might end after these lights. Gotcha. So, Route 20 West. Go ahead. Sorry. So, that's what he's doing. He's yeah. got a couple, three doses. He's now, now he, he starts out. My grandfather had a, I think, a 29 Ford. Like an F six hundred, not even. There's probably a, like a three fifty. It was a small. Twenty nine as a nineteen. I mean, a thirty. Okay. A, a thirty nine. Okay. Thirty nine okay. Ford. Yep. And so my father is looking around, and uh, he buys a. I'm gonna say a mid forties EQ Mac. Okay. It was a freight truck. There was a company in. Uh, the outs uh, right right outside of of uh, Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it was Brookline, but uh, I think it was McCarthy, and uh, they would buy used trucks and resell them. Yep. So uh, the guy had this EQ Mac, and with a long frame on it, it was a, some kind of a freight truck. Mm -hmm. They cut the frame. They bought a he put a used dump body on it. And that was his that was his truck. Uh, that's how we moved his equipment, uh, uh, used trailer, mm -hmm. eventually he had shirts or a trailer in, um, in Cambridge, mm -hmm. um, build him a tag trailer, and that's what he did, he moved all this, he moved all this equipment on a, it was probably like a 10 ton mm -hmm. shirts or trailer, and, and, um, with this little Mac. Yep. And so from and then he had that and he did the same thing with uh, an LF Mac. Uh, an LF Mac was an LJ was a was like a was like a, a modern day our, 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 uh, an eight hundred mm -hmm. an eight hundred Mac. And and the and this a little smaller an L an L F was okay. a, like a six hundred small one so he buys now he's got a, now he's got an lf uh same yeah. thing had uh, they cut the frame uh, did the body uh cut cut the frame um put a body on it uh, this is 1955 yeah. he's hauling a bucyrus series on a tag trailer loading the thing sideways because mm -hmm. it doesn't fit long ways yeah. it's up over the side all chained down yeah. um, he he um He's going by Mac Motors, and they have a an LJ single axle tractor. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. goes in there, talks to the guy, makes a deal. Uh, the truck used to belong to Reliable Fish. Watertown? Um, no. I, geez, I don't... Must have. Must have had something to do with uh, um, uh, around here. Okay. But it it made a trip to New Jersey every night. It, go to, it would go to New Jersey, pick up In fish. In an LJ. Yeah. Well, that's Route, a long trip. Route 20. That's a long trip. <laughs> Route 20. So, I don't know. What yeah. would he do? Drive out. He, he, my father didn't do it. That's yeah. what the truck did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, drive out get loaded and then drive back Come the next back, day who the hell knows that's but that's long, yeah. that's what the that's what the truck did yeah uh, so my father uh, bought it and he got a hold of Scherzer again yeah. and he had him build a low bed yeah uh, that way that way they could haul the they could haul the Bucyrus area okay. uh, from there they updated the HD5s to HD6 uh, he had small doses. Uh, then, uh, at, at the time, Alice Chalmers was the leading track excavator. Okay. Uh, track excavator is a is a loader on tracks, as opposed to a loader, a 915, mm -hmm. uh, a loader with tires. So, a track excavator was tracks. It was a it was a dozer that had a bucket that went up in the air. Uh, so, from there, Alice Chalmers, they they. They were the first ones to really have it, mm -hmm. uh, and then Caterpillar came along, and Caterpillar was a was a better machine. And so from the H, from the Alice Chalmers, he swapped over to uh, uh, 955s. We had a we had 955, 977s, uh, D7 dozers, stuff like that. So when do but, you come into the story? Uh, so so here he is. Yep. Here he is. Um, he's got a he's got a nice little company. Yep. Um, and um, I am, I was just like you. I saw the picture the other day. Mm -hmm. You made your first West Coast yeah. trip a country. Well, dad, you were, yeah. you were, yeah. What were you, like 10 years Ten. old? Yep. That's what he'd do. He, I, I would, I, I plowed snow with the HD5 down at the, down at our, our garage, down at our yard. Mm -hmm. And he put me into a, he put me at a spot where I couldn't really hear anything. How old? And, oh, jeez. Six, seven, know. eight yeah, years old? Probably. No kidding. Probably. Yeah. Probably just about old enough to touch the controls. Yeah. And then um, um, he had, he got, he got tied up with a guy. They're still in business. I can't think of his name. And what they were doing is they were going to Brookline. Mm -hmm. And they were buying these uh, mansions in Brookline. Yeah. Yeah. Big stuff, maybe on two or three acres of land. Yeah. Or he'd, they'd buy side by sides, and he'd go in there, tear the houses down, and they would they would start. They, that was the start of them building these brick high rise. Okay. And that's what he did. He got tied up with this guy, and uh, he did. I, I remember we did one on Green Street in Brookline, yeah. and that's where I was. He had me. Put me in the dozer. And he's just looking. They're gonna load trucks. You just keep pushing the, keep push, uh -huh. pushing the gravel to the, into right. the into the, uh, into the 955s, and they're gonna, they're gonna load. The guy, the guy had a, 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 a line of B81s, yep. and they were loading the B81s. So. And so you spend all your time when you're not in school uh, working yeah, with dad. Yeah, on the on summers. That's that was a great thing. Summers. There was there was times that I couldn't go with them. They were on jobs that they I couldn't be around. But most of the time, anytime I got a chance, uh, it was a dream. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? You get there, and today uh, they'd, they'd be hauling somewhere, and I'd ride with the truck driver yeah. all day, yeah. um, something like that. All right, we're almost oh. at a destination. Okay. I want you to tell the story. I don't know if I have it on video. <laughs> the time you guys were down Cape Cod. Your dad told you to drive the truck back, but you didn't have a license. <laughs> Can you tell that story really quick? Okay. I'm gonna tell. We're gonna be turning. Um, just I'll I'll go like this. Okay. The uh, um, yeah, I'm probably. I remember the first day. First, I was I I was 16. I got my driver's license, and my father sent me out with the low bed to go get uh, a 580 or the 955 or whatever. Yep. And I remember not knowing how to take the corners. Yeah. Uh, it's the next uh, street. Not here. Scraping the, getting off the, getting off the uh, exit, scraping the, have the trailer scrape the guardrail, 
Yeah. Right, right over here. Yep. Next street. Right. Yep. And uh, so we're we're um, he's working on the Cape. He's down at Falmouth digging. A friend of his, a builder, says, "Look it." Come I, not, my father did not want to go to the Cape. Yeah. He says, come on down. We're going to do five houses in a row. He says, it's all sand. Look at that, Mac. Yeah. It's, over by there. It's, it's all sand. Oh, okay. It's all sand. Come on down there. We're going to push them all out. So he goes, he goes and he does it. And it's a Saturday morning. And he says, come on. We, got, we probably got about two hours worth of work. He says, uh, we'll, you take, we'll take the low bend down there, we'll finish it, we'll throw the machine on the low bend, we'll come home. Okay, good. Uh, we'll go down there, finish low bed. Um, we're coming home, I'm on Route 3, and at the time, it was 1948 LJ, and this You say is, when you were coming home, you're driving the low I'm bed driving by yourself, I'm, by uh, yourself. Yes. And your dad's uh, behind you somewhere yeah, on the truck. that's what right. I was just going to say, we're yeah, yeah. coming, we're coming, I'm coming home Route 3, the tree, it was a, it's the, it's a, we still have the LJ. Oh, yeah, right. We, we have to tour the LJ. Yeah, we've done, sure. we've done a little bit of tour, but yes. yeah. Uh, they were painting it. We were painting it. And we had painted the black. The truck was all primed. Then we painted the black fenders and it was primed. There was no names in the door. Mm -hmm. I'm driving. We got 955 on the back. We get pulled over. You got chains on it? Twenty chains I on it? Doubt we had Coming any from Cape Cod. I doubt we it's like had seventy-five any miles. <laughs> I doubt we had any chains. I probably had a, a wooden block at the yeah, front oh of the back. Uh That's gets crazy. pulled over. Uh, uh state trooper, license and registration. Uh, I don't want to show my license because it ain't a, it, it, it's, it's, a car it, license. it's a car license. I just get the registration. I say, you know, I can't find my license. Well, you better find your license. Okay. Show him the license. He says, you know, you don't have a license to drive the truck. Okay, you're wrong. I, I, I says, uh, listen, no, you don't understand. I don't do this for a living. I'm just <laughs> doing my father a favor. Now, he's behind me. Yeah. And I just helping my father out, but I'm going to move the machine. Says, you can't do it. It's not, uh, I'm, it's not my job. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm just helping, helping out. Yeah. Now, just this weekend thing. Get out. Come on. We, we, he sits me in the cruiser at that time, right that right then and there, my father pulls up behind us. Yep. Comes over. What's going on? What's what's up? What's going on? Yeah. He starts telling him. So he asks the troop, he says, What what was he doing wrong? Was he speeding? Was he <laughs> weaving? What was he doing? No, nothing. He's you got no names on the on that tour. Well, I don't tell God damn it. Your father yeah, yeah. gives him a little bit of a thing. Okay, yep. calm down, calm down. Uh trooper gives him a break. You got a license? Let me see your license. My father shows him his truck license. Okay, good. You drive the truck, have your son follow you in the car. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. Now, like I said, we're Route 3. We're, yeah. Wherever the hell we are. Uh, um, I think we're near that gas station, the Texaco with the, with the oh, tall yeah. poles yeah. that go yeah. way up in here. Uh, we're there. Um, okay, let's go. We leave. We hit 128. He pulls over. Your dad I pulls said, over. Yeah, pulls yep. over. So you pulling behind pull him. Pulling behind. What's up, Dad? Drive the truck. Dad, we just got stopped. <laughs> Troopers down the Cape. He doesn't come up this far. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Drive it. I'll meet you at the shop. Oh I, he's like, God. gotta go. <laughs> and I drove it. And I drove it to the yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's, no, that's a good story. We did that. We did a lot of snow plowing. We did a lot of stuff these, like that. These are the guys that taught me how to be a little bit. <laughs> With chains. We'll continue With another chains. day. We gotta go get the new truck. All right. All right. Why are you gonna touch it? Stop touching the stop. It's just something Listen, about, just hey, something hey, about hey, Tony, look, Tony, your name look, isn't on the door yet. Look, stop touching look, the truck. Look, look. <laughs> so I'm driving at home or you're driving? Uh, <laughs> if you want to drive it, I'll make I'll, I'll no, film no, I'll, I'll make no, video. No, no. You know what the difference is with this truck and my truck? It's got one of them big stickers, scum, sticks coming out of the top. It's, it doesn't sound, feel, or smell like an old truck. <laughs> it's like driving a sewing it machine. Is, it's quiet. It is very well, quiet. That, and it, it, when you turn the key, beautiful. it goes click, 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 then it farts. That and then you... That's in Nice and dairy, right? Yeah. That thing is beautiful. Do we have to tell them we're taking? Yeah, I'm going to go inside and check in with them, yeah.
You want to drive it? No. <laughs> Let me throw my bag in, then we'll go inside. What's that? <laughs> I bet dog to dog that you've got one of these in your house. Does that make me a bad person? No, brother. This is how you learn. It's good is this, how, this is how the, good yeah, power exactly. Power. Nice. Uh, you know what I like? I like that flying whatever with the red wings on your oh, video. The, the, the swan with the yeah. red wings? Yeah. I thought about that for about five seconds. I'm not putting that on my. No. Put it on Teddy's. Gonna, put it on gonna, Teddy's truck. Are you gonna put anything on it? Yes, yeah, one. Oh. Just like I have now. I don't know those red wings. Um, know. You know, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I think this is this is the new style too. With it. Yes. Mine's gonna be like this one. That's Yours probably gonna be square. Yeah, just, that's kind of like the bumper I have now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah about eight fifty. Yeah. And that's like the bumper that's coming off of it. Which I have sold. Yes. I already got a guy to sell it to. Perfect. So. Perfect. But yeah. Because you know what? If we keep it, it's just going to end up up in, well, the, up in the storage and going to get scratched. Or it's going to end up flat in the ground and everybody's going to stand on it. Yeah. And touch it. People are going to touch it. That's going to rub it. I yeah. see there's a lot of people on that, that work for us that rubs They stuff. like to touch. Just put yeah. the hands on stuff. And I don't, uh, I don't, that doesn't compute in my world. But all right, let's grab the key and we'll get out of here.